All right, it's springtime, and that means I'm spending a lot of time thinking about two things. One of which is catching speckled trout on topwater baits. The other is getting into deep bayous where the trout group up to feed on little juvenile croakers. It's a little bit early in the game for that, but I'm hoping it's going on, and that's what we're gonna try first this morning before we give those topwaters a whirl. If we even end up doing that, I don't know. But I got Joel with me today. That's fish. He's got a rare day off, and so we've come into the marsh just to see what we can find. We're gonna start fishing deep water first, and if that doesn't pan out, we're gonna head into some shallow ponds and look for some trout on topwater baits. This should be a fun day. Got some really, really nice conditions. The water's freaking gorgeous. It's gorgeous. I'm in love. Oh, no way. Oh, you missed him. It's definitely a fish? Come on, huh? Come on, man. That's a good sign, though. Hopefully he doesn't tell all his friends. It's already a little bit natty, isn't it? Oh, 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 come on, be a fish. There we go. Oh, Joel, there we go. Speckle trout, speckle trout. In deep water. It's a good sign, Joel. Maybe my third cast. About a 15 incher. Very, very few spots on him. Limbo slice, matrix shad, 3 8 ounce death grip jig head. That's my, uh, my go-to this time of year, fishing these deep bayous. It's just so productive in this deeper water. It's a long way down, isn't it? <laughs> There's one. There's one, Joel. He doinked it. Not as big as the last, but definitely a keeper. All right. All right, all right. A little bigger than I thought. Long and lanky. Not a fat fish. Not a fat fish. How skinny that fish is. Man, I love the smell of speckled trout. Just love it. Oh! My drag slipped bad. He pegged it. Hardest hit yet. Payao. <laughs> wait, 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 hold on. Am I over you or what? Hold on, hold on. Well. <laughs> Here, let me get your fish in. <laughs> Did you win the fight, Joel? <laughs> Did you set the hook before yeah, I cast? Yeah, because... Yeah, Alright, well, at least we got the fish in the boat. Amateur hour. You could have swung him around the boat 42 times, you weren't losing him. I mean, they're not monsters, but whew, they're going to be good to eat. This episode of Marshman Masson is brought to you by Puglia Sporting Goods. Yeah, and you miss one. I had. There's one. There's one. Oh yeah! Right under the boat, Joel. I, I I've gotten a lot of bites right there, right under the boat. Not a lot, but two other bites prior to that one. Oh, croaking male. It's a pretty big male. I'ma back us over to there so we can cast back to here. Oh, I love it. I love it. So we don't have a very strong tide range today, and because of that, these fish seem to be a little bit scattered. There's nothing really making them focus on one particular part of this bayou. We're just picking them up in random areas all throughout here. We decided to do this first because I much prefer doing this on a rising tide, and this rising tide's a little bit, a little bit long in the tooth. So we'll do this as long as we can and uh, go chase some other fish. I'm sure we'll fish some bayous as well, but see if we can catch any topwater fish in the ponds. 
We don't have much wind this morning. It's blowing out the southeast at about, you think it's five, Joel? Three. Three? <laughs> it's probably blowing five on the way out, but it seems to be dying. And the gnats are definitely coming out to play. Oh, there you go, Joel. Oh, so pretty. Oh, goodness, I love it. I love it, I love it. Uh, Joel's gotten hot. Joel's gotten hot. Oh, it's pretty. Oh, I love it. Yeah, that's a nice fish, Joel. Oh, dude, that's a nice trout. Look at that. That's a pretty trout. That's a big fish. We're at 72. 72 degree water. Haven't seen that in a while, huh? It's been staying warm every night, that's why. Ah, oh, Joel's got him another one. <laughs> Not as big as the last. No. <laughs> Not even a... Uh... No, he's a keeper, definitely. 13 inches or so. All right, we're gonna say, we're, we're gonna make an agreement. Whoever, whoever catches fish number 10, has to get the clicker. Ten. Yep. Oh, is that agreed? Yeah, that's agreed. That's seven. Joel, show me what to do. Can you teach me, Joel? <laughs> you taught me well. <laughs> Whoo, beautiful. Hey, gorgeous. Hey, gorgeous. Man, why are you so feisty? It's too late for fighting. <laughs> oh, oh, you hit the camera. <laughs> I guess I ought to throw one in front of the boat just to check. You know what the bad news is, huh? You gotta, you gotta it's number 10. <laughs> the clicker, buddy. I got it. Got the clicker. Got him? Get him, Joel. Oh, small keeper, but a keeper. Pink champagne, huh? Mm -hmm. Right here, right here, right here. I'm gonna click yours, all right? Yep. Don't hook me, I'm right behind you. These fish are right, I mean. They're right by the boat. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Or that one, not right by the boat. <laughs> Dude, every cast action, just fantastic. Get him, Joel. Get him, Joel. All right. He's a keeper. Oh, he's definitely a keeper. Double, double. Double trouble. Fish fry at the Masson house tomorrow. Heck, maybe tonight. Get home. Time to get a nap. Now we're actually retrieving these baits with the current. I prefer fishing against the current, but this is just where we, oh, it's where we found them. And they're biting every cast, so we're not about to make a move. Dang. You didn't get a bite on that cast? I did not get a bite on that cast. I did. I did. Oh, nice, nice. All right. <laughs> kidding, dude. Oh, look at that. Oh, you ate your tail. Yeah. You, you have to change that. I don't think they're going to bite it. Oh! Dude, I freaking love, love, love this style of fishing. I just love it. And the best part is, it's gotten rolling... Early this year, we got two more months of this. Woo!
This episode of Marshman Mess On is brought to you by H and H Lure Company and by Plaquemines Parish and by SportsmansOutfitters.com and by Cito New Orleans and by Bill Lewis Lures. Hold on. Oh. I think I'm having a seizure up here. <laughs> oh, dude, three three bites on that cast. Come on, bro. With zero oh, fish. Dang. Come on, bro. Four bites. You had a freaking... What was that? That was bad. Yeah, I mean, I got drilled. I not even fun. <laughs> well... <laughs> I'm making four foot casts. Of course, I'm dropping it down 18 feet. Oh, hit already. There he is. There he is in a double. Get the net. Get the net? Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. All right. My new ego net. Look at this thing. This thing's awesome. Dude, this is a big fish. I'm not look at this. Look. I love my net. Unless it's a red. No, uh, he's a little bit follow, but it is a nice fish. All right. Good job, Joel. Good fish. Really pretty fish. Was it 19? Dude, that is a good fish. You want to let him go? Uh, huh? him, Let's let him go. All right, so this fish is 19 inches, a little bit bigger than we like to keep. We're going to let him go. Man, I cast way too far. Cast. What? Yeah, it's like you're shocked. You're shocked if you make a cast and don't have a fish. <laughs> you were saying? I did not get a good What a slaughter. That's the cut. That's the size I like. As far as taking them home, good 13 inch fish. Keep them while you can. Put them on the tape. Oh, dude, my line jumped. Yeah, I know. Donald took the, all the slack out of that. I mean, straight under the boat. Every single drop. Oh, you sucker. There he is, there he is. Ooh, good fish. Oh, man, what the heck? What is up with you? What is up with you? You foul hooked? You gotta be foul hooked. Gotta be. He's fighting way too weird. Yeah, he's foul hooked. But he's legal. There he is. On a trap. Rattle trap. They're smoking this thing. Oh, nice. Nice fish. Nice fish. Oop, came off. Sorry, he's in the boat. Chrome blue rattle trap. And a pink champagne matrix shad. It's a good combo. Dude, that was quite the wind up. Well, I was hoping he'd hold me for long. You figure they cancel baseball, so you'd, you'd pick up the slack with the wind up. Oh, I think I unripped it out of it. Oh, boy, did he crush it. All right, all right. Nice. They are tattooing this rattle trap. Just awesome. Awesome. Dude, I would not have expected this to be like this. With how bad this place has been. Yep. No, I told you we were gonna whack him today, didn't I? I did. I did tell you that. Huh? Got to give the old man some props. Oh, there he is, dude. I mean, dude, they're not hitting this thing like. Uh... Oh, oh, mine came off. Oh, mine you made me. Off. You made me lose mine. <laughs> That's on you. They're, they're hitting this trap like they're freaking furious. Like the trap stole their lunch money. You 
collect them? Not him. I meant the other ones. Dude, I've never torn up so many baits on a bear. Oh, Joel! <laughs> Dude, you gotta you gotta try this thing. You gotta see how they're hitting this. It's insane. <laughs> they're mad at it. All right, Joel and I had a boat come in on us. So we had a fish kind of surreptitiously. We didn't want them to come right up on us as we were catching all those fish. But let me show you something. We got our limited speckled trout. Fish number 50 came in the boat at 9.06. We probably launched around, I don't know, 7 a.m. or so. We just changed clocks not too long ago. So it's, it's a late sunrise right now. I got to tell you, I haven't caught a limited speckled trout in probably three months. Fishing was horrible in February. Really bad the first week of March. But here recently, just in the past few days, it's really picked up for speckled trout specifically. And the good news is it should last all throughout the spring. Should be a pretty good run if you can find that clean water and that bait like we did today. Now I want to go over what we use today to catch these fish. This is kind of my meat rig. This is my Pro TI. It's a new rig to me. Haven't had it very long at all. It's a Pro TI rod and a Team Lose Pro TI reel. Now spooled on this, I've got 30 pound braid. And you know me, I fish these fluoro leaders. Generally start about maybe six feet or so over time. Time, they get shorter and shorter as I change baits. This one I haven't had on there very long, so it's about six feet. And at the terminal end, I've got a 3 8 ounce death grip jig head. You know that's my favorite for fishing that deep water. And a limbo slice matrix shad. This is just a great combination in the spring. Don't ask me why. It just works, particularly in that deeper water. I just love this. Now, I also had good success today throwing a rattle trap. Let me tell you, the specs were absolutely smashing it. This is a quarter ounce trap, but we didn't have a whole lot of tide today, so it got down to the bottom really, really easily, even though we were catching our fish on the bottom at 18 feet of water. I'd kind of let it fall, go all the way to the bottom, pick it up just once or twice, and they would tattoo it. My rod would just go down like I was fishing amberjack or something, just crazy. Now, when fishing hard plastics, the right rod is very, very important to me. The other rod I was using when I was jigging is a medium heavy power. It's got a fast tip, helps you to react quickly when those fish hit. And I almost invariably get all my hits when my rod is straight up. So I don't have a whole lot of distance to go to set that hook. That arrangement works very well for me. If you've got a different technique, you can maybe go down to a medium power or a little bit slower tip, but that's what works for me. Fishing these hard plastics, you want a rod with a whole lot of give because the, the fish have a ton of leverage to throw these baits. So this is a medium light. This is a, a, a jerk bait or topwater rod. It's kind of what it's designed for, but it works very well for these subsurface hard plastics. And that's what put the fish in the boat for me today. Now, Joel went with a similar setup. He's got a loose LFS. He went with the pink champagne. I gotta tell you, the fish were biting so well today. Color didn't seem to matter. He's got a lot of confidence in this color. I got a lot of confidence in that limbo slice but we fished them right next to each other and the fish were tattooing both of them. Now, Joel rigs his reels with 15 pound fluoro. Uh, I'm not a fluoro or mono fisherman. I like braid, but to each his own. He does very well with this. I like what I fish with. I would hate to have to fish with this. He would hate to have to fish with what I fish with. But either way, just an incredibly successful day here in the marshes of South Louisiana. I'm out here right now. It literally, I can't wait to come back again. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and got something out of it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the Marshman Masson channel on YouTube. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. And if you haven't done so yet, click the join button to become a member of Marshman Masson. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh, we'll see you right here in Marshman Masson.